computer. Sure. Okay. We are recording. So um, we're going to kind of talk about goals today. So I was hoping that maybe some people would share, but if we have a small group, maybe we can just share on our team page. But um, I was hoping that um, by the time you're watching this, if it's a, if you're watching the recording, um, that you have thought about kind of some goals that you have or some thoughts that you have for the year. Because today we're going to kind of dive into how to kind of make a plan for those goals and kind of look at some numbers and where you can find um, um, where you can find kind of some data to help drive your goals a little bit. So um, the biggest thing for that I would say as we kind of get it before we get into all those details is first of all, having a goal is the first step and it's hugely important. Important. Um, I went to a coffee shop. So here locally, if you're not local to Salem, um, there's a coffee shop that is like, hasn't even opened yet. They just had a soft opening I went to the other day. Um, but they have a nonprofit called Ikebox where they work with like at risk youth um, and teens and they just opened a second location. So they lost um, their son, Isaac. He was, I think he lived for two months maybe um, and they lost their son. This is my coffee mug I had this morning. You probably can't see it very well, but I went to their soft opening and they opened a second location, which is so awesome. And on their wall, it says you are the hero of your own story in that coffee shop. Um, and I am totally passionate about that. And I believe that to be true for all of us. And so um, that's kind of where my heart is. And um, what my hope is for you guys too, is as you're thinking about your goals, that you dream big, like even this week, like my husband and I, I've been trying to get dreams out of him and he laughs at me a little bit. <laughs> I'm like, come on, like dream a little bit. Like let's, and he's so logical and, realistic. And I think the place it has to start is by at least talking about it, at least having conversations, even if they seem totally off the wall. Like I want you guys to dream. And, um, that's one of the things I love about this business and having a team is getting to try to inspire more people to just dream for their, for their life. So this is going to be more than probably just about being for Jeff. Cause I'm just passionate about that. But, um, so the other thing that I will say before we get into the details is to put your goal in front of you. Um, I know Katie, you've been at some of the director meetings and stuff, but um, from what I have heard from the people in kind of the bigger Wairinga organization um, it, that are being successful and hitting goals is every single one that has talked about that, they put their goal in front of them somewhere whether it's on the top of their planner, whether it's on their desk somewhere on a whiteboard, whether it's on their fridge, whether it's on their car dashboard, their bathroom mirror, wherever it is, they're putting that goal in front of them. So that would be um, my other challenge to all of you guys is to put your goal in front of you somewhere. Um, so we're going to talk about kind of some different goals. I gave you kind of some ideas in the post before, um, but, um, oh, Tanea is on. Okay. Sorry. I just got a message from her. Um, hello, Tanea. Um, I don't know why it's not, I'm going to mute. Well, you're not muted No, and I can't hear you either. So I don't know. I'll let you figure that out, Tanea, but we're here. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to show you guys kind of some numbers. So I gave you some ideas on that post of kind of where you could take your goals, whether it's, you know, you have, I want to, there you are. Hi. Um, whether you want to make a certain amount, so it could be a paycheck goal, whether you want to earn Disney, you guys, we have the whole year. Like when I first started Pamper Chef, I started in August and busted my butt to earn a, a trip, a level one trip by the end of the year. And when I hit January this last year in 2018, I was like, oh my gosh, I have 12 months. Yes. So we have 12 months. So um, whether it's Disney, whether it's a paycheck, um, whether it's a goal that you have um, personally in your life, that you want to pay off debt. So let's make X amount of months. So we're going to kind of look at those. So I'm going to start with just, I made a little chart for paychecks. Oh, I need a screen share. Hold on. I was going to just like go to it, but. Um, and I always forget how to do this. Screen share. Um, 
window. Uh oh, you guys. Meeting. Here we go. Maybe. Nope. Speaker view. Enter full screen. Start share. Okay, tell me if this works. Is it working? Hold on. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, okay. So I made this um, chart for paychecks. Um, so I'm a math person, I taught math for eight years. Um, so I like this kind of stuff. But if you want to calculate your paycheck and the sales you need to earn a certain paycheck, you just take the paycheck you want, you divide it by the percent of commission that you would get, and that would give you the sales that you need. So I made this chart myself just by using that um, formula. The commission that you need, I did based on the commission chart that we have. So monthly sales, the 750, I did this one because this was the 20% commission. So right here, this row is the first row of our commission chart where you would have a 20% commission. So, and actually I think the monthly sales is actually 749 because it's from the um, commission chart. Yeah, 749, I'm gonna change that. Um, Cause anywhere from a dollar to 749, you get 20% commission. So if your monthly sales are 749 and you have a 20% commission, that's a $149 paycheck, okay? So, then I also took it a step further to say, okay, how many $200 parties would I need to have to hit that? How many $400 parties would I need to have? Because the other thing I want you guys to see, and I'll actually show you how to find this if you don't know, um, is if you can put some quality into your parties, if you can do some upselling, if you can interact better, if you can maybe add a cooking show into your month, um, you know, if you can add $1,000 virtual party a month, you can expand your business without driving yourself completely crazy. So, um, you know, if you look down here and you see number of $200 parties, those numbers are quite a bit bigger. So, you know, what if I worked on my show average and got it up to $400? What if I got it to 500? So I included those in there. Um, if you wanted a thousand dollar paycheck, this is the, the last part of the chart. So that's if you hit 400 in sales and you'd get a 25% commission. Um, when I first started, I was like, I want to hit, I made my goal 4,000 in sales every month because I wanted to get the highest commission that I could. So this is where I landed, um, and what I wanted. So, and I did eight shows a month. Um, and my goal was two recruits. So, um, this hopefully will help you. I can post this and send it to you or whatever. Um, you can take a screenshot if you want. Uh, but I do have a screenshot of this I can send to you guys. Um, so if you have a paycheck goal, kind of breaking the numbers down, if you just are like, yeah, this sounds really good. I want to do this, but you don't have it broken down on what you need to do to accomplish that. It's you're less likely to be successful. So that's why kind of this meeting is more about breaking those numbers down and figuring out what you need to do. And I, I like to dream. So Tanea, I know you came late and I know Marissa, you're just hopping on. Um, but I like to dream big. So I was talking um, when we first started the meeting about doing that and about having those conversations. And my husband laughs at me when I try to get him to dream big. Um, and you need to have those conversations, but then let's break it down. Let's take it step by step. Let's put that and make it a reality. So instead of saying, okay, this is my dream. And then you have this expectation of hitting it in one month. Well, that's probably not realistic. And so then you give up on your dream. So, you know, breaking it down. Okay. I want to hit, I have a dream for acres of hope. I want to hit that. I had a five year plan. Now it's a four year plan. I'm a year into it. And now I'm like, shoot, if I make X amount and I continue to make this amount that I'm at right now, it becomes a two year plan, you know? So I'm not thinking this grandiose, I'm dreaming big, but then I'm also breaking it down and saying, okay, five years, two years, four years, you know, I'm looking at the math behind it. So I think that's really important also when you are looking at a goal. So um, that's kind of paycheck driven or oriented. Um, and then I was just using this. So if you guys, uh, these are our old um, brochures, but if you guys haven't seen 
um, this percentage commission chart, that's where I kind of got all those numbers with the right spot. Yeah. So um, that is one route you can take is if you have kind of just an amount you want to earn each month, you could do the paycheck. Um, the Another one you could do is Disney. So if you wanted to earn Disney, I wanted to kind of show you guys that a little bit. So if, and this I put in front of me, so if you guys haven't printed this off, I have a tracker, tells you the points down here. Um, so I print this off, I printed it off last year. Let me see where I have a file for it. Oh, they're not in there. It's actually in my planner. But um, I had a tracker for last year with my Disney, and I updated it every month. Here it is. Um, so this was my tracker. I haven't even filled it in because I did make it. But this was my tracker for Hawaii. Um, this is where I actually broke down. This is what I need in sales. Um, so these were my sales. These were my recruits. Um, and then these were my consistency points. So if you guys don't know for Disney, um, you can earn consistency points. So if you um, sell 2000, I believe every single month for the, there's four quarters, um, you can get a thousand consistency points each quarter. So that's four extra thousand points in a year if you sell 2000 minimum every month. So that's something that I told myself I was going to do too because I wanted that extra 4,000 points towards a trip. So um, so if Disney is something you want to earn, I strongly recommend printing off this tracker and tracking it each month and seeing, and then every month updating, okay? So let's say I, w I overshot my goal one month. Okay, then I'm going to divide that by, okay, now we have 10 months left and keep dividing it and say, okay, this is how much I need each month and adjusting your goal. If you overshot it, then you're gonna need less the next month. If you undershot it, you're gonna need a little bit more. Um, so for Disney, I highly recommend, so these are the point breakdowns. I highly recommend dividing them. So wherever you land, if you're gonna shoot for level one or you're gonna shoot for level two, um, whether you're a consultant, um, um, team leader, uh, or whether you've promoted to director or beyond, okay, whatever you're going to shoot for. So mine, I'm a director, advanced director. Um, I'm going to shoot for level two, so I need 80,000 points. I know that's backwards, but I'm going to divide that by 11. You do not want to be crunching in December trying to earn the trip. It's not fun, especially the last two weeks of December. We're in it right now. Um, not easy to book parties the week of Christmas. So I highly recommend dividing those numbers by 11. So when I take 80,000 and divide it by 11, I need 7,272 points per month to earn that level two. So that's a level two trip. Um, so when I take that 7,000, I'm not gonna go for, at least not yet, maybe the second half of the year this will change, but right now my goal is not 7,000 in sales a month. So that means I need to recruit. So if I have one qualified recruit, then that means I only need 4,272 in sales a month. And for me, that's about where I want to be anyways. Um, bless you. My daughter just came in. Um, so, or I can get two qualified recruits and then I only need 1,272 in sales. So you kind of can break that down to whatever you want and whatever works for you. Um, but you need to break down the numbers, whatever your numbers are, whatever your goal is, break down the numbers. Um, so I would like to show you. So then once you kind of have an idea, okay, I want to get this many points per month for a trip. I want to get this many sales per month for, um, for your paycheck, whatever it is that you're going for. Um, once you have that, then you want to figure out, okay, how many parties do I need per month? So um, I want to show you guys, I'm going to screen share again, uh, start share. I want to show you guys, let's see if I'm on the right spot. I think so. Um, so this is my messenger, but let's go to consultant corner. I want to show you guys, um, where you can find your show average. If you don't know, I need to move this thing out of the way because it's right in my way. There we go. 
So if you go to selling and recruiting, if you don't know this, you really, this should be like your home. Um, selling and recruiting, actually, yeah, okay. So we're gonna go to consultant connection. And then it usually takes a second to load, but there's a button. Uh, there's two buttons. You can run reports here, but consultant connection, the first button, if you click on performance detail in the bottom left, you will get this screen. First of all, this is what you can see what your paycheck is gonna be before you actually get your paycheck. So this is current right here. This is year to date over here. So you can see your current paycheck. But where you look at, and this is in my way, where you look at your show average is right here. So if you look right here, um, that is my, which one of my goals is actually to increase that. That right there, so catalog shows for me are my online parties that I do. So um, my party average is 459. This up here, it says I had three shows. Um, I'm pretty sure those were all fundraisers. So I had a pretty big fundraiser so that I had like a $1,300 or $1,600 fundraiser. So that's why my average is, is higher on that one. Generally, a online fundraiser is not going to bring my average up that much. But uh, this is where the meat of it is. So you'll see I have 90 shows. That's going to be the best data um, to, for me to look at. So, and this also shows you the average number of orders per show. So that's another thing if you wanted to work on, you know, I want to get work on getting more orders. I'm going to try to motivate my host or incentivize my host. Maybe I'm going to incentivize them to, to do, you know, if you get 15 orders, I'm going to give you an extra gift or whatever it is that you want to work on. That's where you find your show average. So, once you have your show average, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen here. Once you have your show average, then you can figure out, okay, how many, if I wanna have 4,772 or 272 in sales for, to earn a trip, um, how many shows do I need to have? You divide that. So let's, let's do my Disney one, four, or 7272, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna get one qualified recruit, um, so if you get one qualified recruit a month, you get 3,000 points. So to earn a trip, a um, couple things. To earn a trip, you're, you're going to want to recruit or you're going to be a sales crazy person and you're going to be our top sales every month, which is fine. You can do that too. Um, but let's say I want to sell 4,272 and my average is 459. Was that what it was? Divide it by 459. So I need to have 9.3 shows a month. So there, I'm gonna get my show goal, okay? Um, when I put a goal in front of me, you guys, and I put it somewhere that I'm seeing it, I will hit that goal. Um, it, it's proven time and time again. Um, so for me, one of my goals I'm really good at is getting however many parties I want. Uh, and the reason for that is because I use these sticky tabs and a lot of you guys probably have seen this, but I use these sticky tabs and I put them in my calendar even blank. Okay. So I haven't finished February yet. Um, but I put them, let me go back to December so you can see my full month. Lately I have been saying, okay, so this is December. And this week is December, but it wouldn't close in December. So I'm not gonna put tabs on that week because it didn't close in December. So these are the three weeks of parties that closed in December and I wanted four each week. So these were blank. They were blank parties and I keep them in front of me, I keep them in my calendar um, so that I'm like, I, look, I open my calendar and every time I open my calendar, I'm like, well, I got some blank tabs. I, I need to send some messages, I need to fill those. So when I have that goal in front of me, I'm gonna hit it. So when I'm looking at my trip points every month, I'm gonna hit it. Now, here's the other thing I wanna share the screen again. Um, so before I do that, if you want to earn a trip, if you want a paycheck that's generally larger than $1,000, you, you're gonna to wanna to recruit. You're gonna to wanna to go for directorship. You're gonna to wanna to at least go for team leaders. So let me share. Um, okay, let's go back to this. 
Um, so if you look at this, I didn't go past $2,000 for a paycheck, okay? Um, that's 8,000 in sales monthly. This is just if you're a consultant, okay? Um, so I did not factor any overrides or bonuses or um, anything if you have team members on your team. This is just if you're a consultant. So if you've seen Kristen's paycheck get shared, if you've seen my paycheck get shared, it makes a big difference. Kristen's paycheck usually would be around $2,000, um, but she all the rest of it is overrides and bonuses from her building a team, which she has put her work into and she is well-deserved <laughs> for her because she has done a lot of work to get where she's at. Um, but it doesn't happen overnight either. She's been in this business almost five years. So I, I actually had 3000 on here and I'm like, that's just stupid. Nobody should try to get a $3,000 paycheck without recruiting people. You get to bring people alongside of you and share this awesome opportunity. Um, and also increase your paycheck at the same time. So if you want to get in this range of a paycheck or more, um, ask people about the business. So the other thing, whoops, sorry guys. Um, the other thing with that, I wanted to show you, if you guys don't know where this is, um, is the career plan. So if you look here, if you go to selling and recruiting and you click career plan, um, there's a chart. So if you guys don't, haven't seen this, this is the career plan chart. So um, this is where everybody starts, consultant. So if you don't have anyone on your team that's active, you're a consultant. Senior consultant means you have one active person on your team that has 150 in sales, um, and you have 150 in sales. Team leader means you have two active people on your team, and you have 750 in sales. So and these are your overrides and bonuses, so you can see all that. Um, Right now, um, Kate, Katie, who's on this call, is that director, okay? So this is the director, then it goes to advanced, that's where I'm at right now. Um, Katie's about to be an advanced director, what, what? I just said that, I know I just announced that. Um, then there's senior director, which you'll see on our vision board on our team page. So if you look at our team page, uh, this is our vision board. So. I wonder if I can just view, yeah, I can just view it. This is our vision board and it says senior bound. That's because we're going for senior director right now. Um, so that means three first generation directors and one second generation. This second gen, oh yes, hold on. Yes. We can't see anything except your paycheck commission chart. Oh really? Oh. Yeah, I can't see anything you're talking about. Okay, hold on. I'm going to stop share and start share again. Oh, I get, I bet I have to, I closed out of it. Okay. Desktop one. Let me see. Tell me if, well, no. Okay. Tell me, does that work? I can okay. see your Facebook. Right. Okay. Yes. So this is our, but you couldn't see the career plan. No. Oh, darn it. Okay. So this is our senior bound, um, page. So that means we need to have three first gen um, directors and one second gen. This second gen right here, Teal, is actually filling right now. She's probably going to hit it today. So that means we need two more first gen directors and we will be a senior team, which is really exciting. Now tell me if I X out of this, can you still see? Yes. Okay. If I go over here, can you see? Now, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, that must be a screen sharing thing that I have not known was, uh, <laughs> was a thing. Okay. So if I go to a different area, I need to stop my screen share. Okay. So I went to selling and recruiting and career plan. Um, and then there's a chart. So if you download the chart, so oh. th this is what I was trying to show you guys. Sorry. So consultant, senior consultant is one active team leader is two active, 750 personal sales, 2,500 team sales. So this is where we're at right now as a team, as a team to gather, we are at the advanced director area. Um, right now, Katie is at director and will soon be advanced and Teal is about to be a, our director. So right now, this 
um, with Kristen, with the Waringa organization, we're at executive down here and we're about to hit senior exec. So the highest you can be in the entire company is national. So this is the career chart, if you haven't seen that. Um, and it tells you what you need and then you get all your overrides and bonuses. So um, you want to, let me, if you want, um, if you want that higher paycheck, if you want to earn a trip, all those things, you want to go for directorship. And if you, you guys directorship, you can talk to Katie, you can talk to Teal. If you work with people, here's the other thing too. Um, Ikebox and Isaac's room didn't happen by itself. They had a lot of people that helped, right? A lot of people that came alongside them. So if you want directorship, if you want to move up in that career plan, um, we are here to help you. Okay. Um, if I'm your upline director, I'm here to help you. Even if, even if you're too, if, even if you're second gen, I'm here to help you. So if you want directorship, reach out to me. Um, Kristen helps me a ton. So Kristen helps me as I help you. So, um, you have so many layers of people on this team to help you. So if you want to hit director, be in communication with us um, and we can help you get that. I strongly believe if we put something in front of us, we can hit it, okay? Um, it might not be in our exact timeline, but we can hit it. Um, so let me see, party average. Um, okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out, kind of, this is kind of a shorter meeting. We're going to wrap it up pretty quick, but, um, and if anybody wants to share just a little side note, um, I would love to hear some of your guys' goals if you feel brave enough to share. Um, but a side note about your kind of your goals and your why, um, your why and your goals aren't too small. So I have a problem in my business that people look at my goal of Acres of Hope and think it's just big. It's too big. I, can, I can't do that. That's too big. I, I couldn't be that. It's too big or whatever. They can't, they can't relate to my goal as much. And I know I've talked with Katie about this too, but your goal, whether it's, I know Teal's is to start building a garage and whatever it is, you know, she lives in Montana where the winters are really bad. So if you live in Oregon, you're like, build a garage, what? Um, get out of the rain. But um, whatever it is, people can relate to it. If it's to pay off debt. So I've heard so many people say paying off debt is not this big deal. And that's a huge deal. And so many people can relate to it. Um, and so when you recruit, you're going to be able to recruit more because people can relate. Oh, I want to pay off debt too. Like, oh yes, I'd love to finish. You know, they, it might not be a garage, but it might get them dreaming about what they could renovate in their house or an addition they could do or remodeling their kitchen or whatever. Like those are relatable. So don't discount what your guys' goals are. No matter how big or how small they are, don't discount them because if you have kind of, they're, they're not even, I don't even like calling them big or small. Um, but my goal is like five years out, maybe two years now, which is exciting, but it's two years out. So I can't be telling people, look what I've already done. I can say I'm this far into my goal. Um, but it's hard for people to wrap their heads around and it's hard for people to relate because of that. So don't discount your goal because people are going to be able to relate to you. Um, if, if you think it's something that, you know, oh, this is just small. Well, a lot of people probably can relate to that paying off debt, those types of things. Um, the other thing I wanted to just remind you guys is to have some personal goals too, like mental health goals, <laughs> positive talk goals. Yay. Um, telling yourself positive things in your head every day. If you're telling yourself the negative things, that's going to happen. Like it is we, and us, especially as women are very hard on ourselves and we have a whole lot more negative self-talk than positive. So try to change that. Um, along with those goals, on your bathroom mirror, write down three positive affirmations you're gonna say about yourself every day and say them, say them out loud, or at least read them, at least at the minimum when you're getting ready. Um, and 
if you haven't taken any trainings on positive affirmations or heard any of that, you want to write those affirmations as if they already have happened. So if you have a goal to be a director, I am a successful director at the Pampered Chef. You, you say it as if it's already happening. Okay. Um, this, this last week thinking about like health goals, I'm like, I hate scales. I hate like that type of thing when it comes to like weight loss or whatever, like uh, I want to just feel healthy. I want to feel my clothes get smaller. I want to like, I just get discouraged by a scale. So when I'm doing health goals, I try to do goals that are not related to the number on a scale. Um, I'm 5'10", so the number on the scale is always large um, <laughs> for being tall. Um, so I try to do goals about like feeling healthier, having more energy, a size. I do a size in pants. Like my pants don't lie, okay? So I don't have to look at every little number on the scale, but I can look like, mm, are my jeans getting tighter? Okay, need a cut back, you know, or I want to be this size. So whatever your personal goals, whatever they are, um, be kind to yourself and say positive things to yourself. That's important. Um, so who wants to share some of their goals that they have? And I know in other meetings, we've talked about big, hairy, scary goals, which is true. Um, but even if you think it's not a big, hairy, scary goal, it could be, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys got? Anybody want to share before we pop off here? I want to hear people's goals. Tanea, are you talking? Are you trying to unmute? I just Thank unmuted you. you. I unmuted you. Am I on? Yep, you're on. So um, it's interesting. I got the income goal a little bit higher but everything else was right in that list. I'm not a math person. I don't <laughs> math um, ever. So I was like, oh, that's right in the range. So it's the, um, I want to get the Disney level two. Okay. That's mm, awesome. But that number breakdown for the points is the hairy, scary part. So I actually wrote Elite Seller with a question mark. I don't. Ooh, I, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I got to show you guys something else too that I forgot about. But yes. So four thousand to six thousand a month for my for my goal sales. Um, but I just want to. My biggest thing right now is upping my sale average. Mm -hmm. So when I first started in the summertime, I was a boss at host coaching and I've gotten away from that a little bit. So for the new year, it's revamping my host coaching and insisting on those phone calls and coming up with a better um, plan for my, um, not just like having a party on the calendar, but having my host, host coaching on the calendar. Um, and being a better time manager with the limited time that I have. Because I still, I mean, I work full time and I am alone on my team. I have 750 cases at work. And so that gives me zero brain space to think about Pampered Chef or to dream or to, to remember all of the things that I'm supposed to be doing. And people don't want to have coaching calls at 5 a.m. So <laughs> <laughs> just having a better plan because I still want to stick with the eight to 10 parties per month. I notice when I'm running five consecutive parties um, or seven consecutive parties, like I have multiple times, I'm spinning my wheels because I'm not giving them the attention that I need. So just taking some feedback that I've learned this year and throwing it into next year. I and then I want to have a PC flash sale um, to, because one of my personal goals is to declutter. I notice when I am cluttered, I'm feeling very anxious and apprehensive about life in general. And I have 700 square feet. I don't have enough room for the five PC <laughs> boxes I have in my house. <laughs> oh, those surprise boxes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, it's great. I love it. I'm totally getting one again next year when I go to conference, but um, it's a little extreme. 
So yes. And then environmental shifts. That's the other big thing. So just um, shifting, like creating that space, like you had mentioned that positive affirmation being, you know, written down um, and, and being able to see that. So uh, I have a plan for that at work and at home. That's awesome. Marissa is echoing what you said. I'm not sure what, which part of what you said, but she commented and said, oh my gosh, Tanea, same here. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're not yeah. alone, apparently. Um, I love those. Those are awesome. I love big, hairy, scary goals. I actually, I think, did Kristen share this on the team page, this thing she made? Oh, I haven't seen that. Okay, let me screen share. Gosh, um, make sure I get to the right place this time. I think it's gonna be this one. Um, you can tell I don't do, um, gosh, and then these things are in my way. So, oh, here we go. Um, this is a thing that Kristen made that I just tweaked. Gosh, these are like, everything's in my way. So I can't see my screen. Oh, I can't see the, oh, wait, ay ay ay. Sorry, I'm trying. There we go. There we go. Um, this is something that Kristen shared. Maybe it was, it must have been on the director page. And I just tweaked it on Canva. So these are my monthly sales goals. So, Tanea, you said excellence. Um, you mentioned, or elite seller. Mm -hmm. um, and I have some goals for like excellence um, and excellence in personal sales. So, if I hit. 6,060. So the excellence period goes until May 31st, for those of you that don't know that. Um, so if I hit 6,060 all the way until May 31st, so you'll notice that in June, my sale goes back down to, or my goal goes back down to 6,000. I mean, it's essentially the same. But elite seller is that $6,000 mark. So I put that in there and that's something for me that's a hairy, scary goal. Like I'm like, uh, I don't know about that, but I'm putting it in there because I'm just going to do the hairy, scary thing. Um, and earning excellence in uh, personal sales, I would earn if I got 6060 from January till May. So um, that's one thing. This is a tracker I can share with you guys. You would have to make a copy first and then edit it. Otherwise, you'll change mine. Um, but that's a tracker. And then this is uh, this is the one um, that I made. I just made this for myself um, for my goals. So this is my personal excellence in personal sales, excellence in developing leaders. So these I only have till May because that's when the earning period is for excellence. Excellence in recruiting, I need nine points. I need three more points for developing leaders and then paycheck um, to have a $3,000 a month paycheck every month. Uh, and then this, this is Disney World Elite. <laughs> um, that's a hairy, scary one too. But I put it on there because who knows? I would need 13,000 points per month. So, um, and I need to recruit more. But um, the other thing with that is I have not been recruiting very well. And I don't have a good system in place of where I'm putting my recruiting goal other than to earn a trip. So as soon as I earned Hawaii, I was like, eh, and I have not been recruiting you guys. I'm full disclosure right here. I have not been recruiting because I earned Hawaii and it's not in front of me other than in connection to earning the trip. So that's something I need to personally work on is having that in front of me, not just in connection to a trip. So um, that's how important <laughs> having those goals in front of us are. Um, I love that. Um, your goals, Tanea. I love how hairy scary they are. And we are actually going to add a team meeting. This might be like uh, for some of you guys, but we're going to start doing um, an in-home team meeting like we always have. Um, we're going to do it at Brandy's house and we're going to keep it there, um, every week and do in home. Um, the every first week, I mean, sorry, every month, the first Thursday of every month, uh, we're going to do in home. And then the third Thursday, although this month is going to be different cause I have a cooking show, but the third Thursday, we're going to do a zoom meeting. 
every month. And this month um, in January, the topic is actually going to be systems and organization. And we'll talk about um, that's important. It's something I'm still working on. Sounds like Tanea, you're there <laughs> too, trying to find that out of like, oh, what do we do? Mm -hmm. So um, when we have things in place, it makes it so much easier. Um, Marissa, Katie, anybody else want to share? Marissa, you can type in the chat bar too. If you're not at a place where you can actually video, you could type if you want, if you want to share any of your goals in the chat bar. Katie, did you want to share yours? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so my goals are, <clears throat> I want to make at least a thousand dollars a month. Um, I want to earn what? Disney level two. I want to save money for a kitchen remodel, uh, and I want to go to conference, good, and I need to um, save money for that as well, so I'm just going to kind of save as much as I can and then put some of it towards conference and put some of it towards remodel, and some of it towards Disney. <laughs> yes. um, and some personal goals of mine is to more consistently eat healthy and work out. And I want to do less screen time, which will equal more time with my family, which is going to be tricky for me. And, you know, we all run an online business. So it's hard to, <laughs> I feel like it's hard to have less screen time when <laughs> your um, business depends on screen time pretty much. <laughs> well, yeah. But it's true. As a leader, I I should like not even be saying this. But like, I think it really is important to have those boundaries when it comes to screen time. You know that. Yeah, I've talked with you about that, Katie. But um, and my husband and I are trying something new. We're not doing great at it. It's great now, so it's hard because we're not in our normal like. Okay, we're we're home from school. And he's off work for these two weeks, so we have not been good about it. But we're trying to do that too. And I think like when we were doing it, the week before break, um, it really was great. So having those boundaries of saying, you know what, I'm going to put my phone away for an hour, or I'm not going to plug in my phone next to my bed. Um, I know my husband and I have a hard time if we have our phones next to our bed. We're like looking at them first thing before we go to bed. First thing when we wake up in the morning, it's stupid. So um, I have made the small change and I plug my phone in on my dresser, which is away from my bed. I have to get out of bed when my alarm goes off to turn it off. And I'm not laying in bed looking at my phone. And I will, I will hear my phone vibrate and I will see it light up in my room and I'm like... <gasps> If that was right next to me, I would totally have no self-control. I have to, like, the curiosity would have to have me look at my phone. But because it's somewhere else, I'm like, I'm not getting up. So, um, yes, I think boundaries with screen time is a very healthy thing to do. I do that, too. I get, yeah. So I get um, super stressed out. If I get a message and I don't look at it right away, I'm like, what did they say? What if they want to, what if they're interested in joining the business? What if they're having a problem with something and I need to help them right now? Like, Okay, but here's the other thing. When you don't respond to people right away, you give them a chance to problem solve themselves. And half the time they'll figure it out by the time you respond. Like, Why are you talking about me, Emmy? So many, I've done that so many times with Kristen. I like asked her something and then I'm like, oh, never mind, figured it out. Never mind. Like, in, especially in my first like six months of business. Well, never mind. Figured it out. Um, and a lot of times people figure it out before you respond to them. And when you're recruiting people, if you have that lag time in between responding, I'm not saying do it strategically, but like it's okay to have space between there because they're like, oh, she's not this like crazy person who like responds every second, you know, and. Everything that you do also reflects to somebody who might do the business. And if you're always responding and you're always on your phone, that's, that's the communication you're telling to them is that they, they, you don't want to come to my meeting. They have to do the same thing and they, you know, they're not going to want to. And if they, today I'm saying, hi, look, she's leaving. <laughs> um, and if they see you doing that, then they think they have to do that. So there's a lot of 
positives that come from not responding right away. So I love that. I love that. Okay. Any other ones, Katie? Those are awesome. Nope. That's it. That's what I, I had. I feel like I'm forgetting one, getting one but. You need to get to conference. That needs to be your number one goal. What? I said you need to get to conference. That needs to be your number one goal. Oh, I love conference. Okay. Uh, Marissa. I didn't have conference on mine, but I'm definitely going. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Love it. I'm going. Um, and your registration, Katie, should only be $99. $99. Your first time. Only ninety-nine. Uh, so Marissa says, my goal is just to get back into the business. I stopped for a while because I had other priorities and I am now considered inactive. But now that I'm free again, I need to go find the energy to get back into it because I really like to be and I hate not finishing things. I love it. I've just gotten too lazy for comfort. Oh, I love your honesty, Marissa. Um, you need a message me personally, cause I can totally, if you, if you need help with any of those goals and like just getting back rolling into things, um, I am totally willing to help. We can set up a phone call and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and be thinking specifically like kind of what we talked about in the meeting with numbers, um, get to some specifics of how many parties do you want to do? What do you, what do you want your paycheck to look like? So anything else you guys want to add? No, one week is seven days. <laughs> oh, I think I forgot to mute myself. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> um, okay, guys. Well, I will let you get back to your Sunday morning. Um, I better stop recording somehow. I don't. I'm. I'm learning. Oh, I wait. Oh, it is a recording. Okay, pause. Stop. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. Adios. Happy New Year. Happy New Year!